Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Castletown Liam Mellows and St John's Volunteers are two Wexford clubs that are participating in the GAA's National Healthy Club Project. Joining me to discuss the project and the association's commitment to promoting health and well-being is Colin Regan, the GAA's Community and Health Manager. Colin, this week Business Matters is looking at the topic of mindfulness and the GAA is one such organisation which has integrated such initiatives into their operations in recent years. But what was it that triggered the GAA's decision to put more focus on this particular area? Well, our work in the area of, of health and well-being, I suppose, is, goes back to the very beginnings of the GAA. Uh, primarily, people will probably see it in terms of physical health and what, what can be accrued from playing our games and training for our games. But back in 2006, we developed a partnership with the HSE and put in place our alcohol and substance abuse prevention programme. At the time, Ireland was one of the highest consumers of alcohol in, in the OECD and uh, across Europe. And since its evolution, it's kind of between 2006 and 2011 when I took up the role, um, it was clear that a broader, more holistic approach was required. And that was the feedback we were getting from our clubs at the time, Carl. So we went about developing a community and health department in here in Crow Park to focus on and drive and develop programmes that would tackle a more holistic approach to health and make them available to our club and county networks. So talk to me about some of the initiatives that you've brought about since you took on that role. Well, I, I, we kind of have uh, six key areas of focus uh, that, that we work on, uh, Carl, and uh, he- healthy eating uh, would be one. We have a brilliant Recipes for Success programme that we've developed with St Angela's uh, Home Economics Teacher Training College in Sligo. Uh, we have areas of physical activity uh, for non-playing members, and one example there would be Men on the Move that targets over 35-year-olds who are look- men who are looking to, to lose a little bit of weight. We do a lot still in the area of drug and alcohol education and gambling awareness is a new kind of topic that's that's high on the agenda in, in terms of uh, addiction awareness. Um, we do a, a lot in the area of community development and particularly trying to reach out to older members and our social initiative uh, is, is our kind of flagship programme there. That was started up back in 2009 under the auspices of then President Mary McAleese and she remains a, a patron for that pro- uh, programme and it tries to re-engage older members that might be experiencing some isolation or uh, loneliness um, and try to use the club as a mechanism for re-engaging them with their local communities and their, their, their friends and neighbours. Um, and, and then uh, we also try to focus on the area of kind of personal uh, training and development uh, and we have developed health and wellbeing officer training over the last two years that has been rolled out to at least 500 health and wellbeing officers in GA clubs across the country Uh, and uh, we we try to make available other related training that we feel might benefit our members and uh, and our clubs in the area of health and wellbeing. Now it has been well reported over the past 10 years that many players of the GAA were affected by both losing their jobs in the construction sector and also by losing many friends to emigration. What did the GAA do around this period to assist these? Yeah, it, 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 it remains a, a major issue. You know, we ha- we still have that uh, migration towards the, the the large urban centres, even though emigration may have um, uh, ceased or at least dropped off to to traditional levels. Uh, what we try to do just is to to work with our, our clubs um, to to make sure that they they are working with local um, enterprises, SMEs, etc., to maximise whatever potential there is for rural local employment uh, to try to facilitate young people to stay in the communities in which they're born, raised and schooled. We, we have a, a national uh, committee at the moment which is chaired by Pat Spillane that is looking at that very topic um, of rural regeneration. Um, it's not a topic I think that the GA can uh, resolve or solve on its own. It's going to take national level policy and refocus of investment into the, the not just rural Ireland but you know some of the, the, the smaller urban centres as well, uh, the likes of off Waterford and, uh, and Sligo and, and Letterkenny so we can have smaller hubs are, w- are within commutable distance for those who want to live and remain um, in the more sparsely populated parts of Ireland. Now Colin over the past number of years the GAA has developed a concept of the healthy club. How does this manifest itself in your eyes? 
Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I suppose a healthy club uh, is a hub for health in its community. Uh, and we have 60 clubs currently involved in, in phase two of the project. They're just coming to an end. And we hope to grow it to 150 clubs in phase three starting in January 2018. They go through a process of asking their members and their communities, what, what would you like to see the club do to um, enhance the health of its members, but also the local community? They go about implementing an action plan to target two or three key areas, and that might be healthy eating, it might be engaging older members in the community, it might be uh, providing some physical activity opportunities through walking groups for, for, for non-playing members, uh, etc., etc. So uh, it's really transforming the perception of what a GA club can do for its members and for its local community. Now, gender balance is a subject which has been under a lot of scrutiny in recent months both from a political and a corporate perspective. But female representation on the GAA's health and wellbeing committees has well and truly bucked this trend. And I know that you feel that this is one of the major reasons why the GAA's health and community initiatives have been so successful. Absolutely, um, Carl. Like our, our National Health and Wellbeing Committee is 50-50 male-female and without any gender quota required. Uh, and we, that there has uh, been replicated. We have four provincial committees and 32 uh, county health and wellbeing committees and the gender balance remains uh, in balance the whole way through. And at, at grassroots level then in clubs, we have seen a lot of um, female leaders coming to the fore and taking up the position of club health and wellbeing officer. For many of them, um, they may not have ever seen themselves as having a, a role in the club as a chairperson or a referee or a coach. But uh, as we know, the, the female of the species, you know, the, the, they, they can tend to be the guardians of health in their own families and often in the males uh, within their, their families in terms of husbands or, or, or sons as well. And they really see a role for themselves in bringing that agenda to the fore uh, within their own club. And what we've also noticed, and I've seen this in my own club, Melvin Gales up in the, in the northwest, um, on, on the tip of Leitrim, a number of those uh, female leaders that have taken up the role of health and wellbeing officer, and that's, it's not an, an obligatory role in GA clubs. We recommend clubs uh, to, to, to fill that position. Once they've entered that space, we have had a number of those um, female leaders who have gone on to become trained up as coaches. And as a result now, for the first time ever, my own club, Melvin Gales, has uh, ladies underage teams representing the community. And our intention is to grow that over the coming years. So we will have a, eventually a senior team, female team representing the club as well. So it's really been, uh, you know, it's been a, a great ad, unexpected but very welcome add-on bonus that the development of the health and wellbeing structures in the association has brought. And I think it will have a transformative effect over the association in the decades to come. Now, if you've just tuned in, I'm speaking to the GAA's Community and Health Manager, Colin Regan. Colin, you're one of the guest speakers at the inaugural Rejuvenate Ireland Wellbeing Conference in Wexford last month. But what was your message for the attendees at this event? Uh, my, my key message was that everybody has a role to play in health and well-being and that the association is trying to do what it can, uh, but the through our own networks, but I, I believe that it's by empowering both individuals and communities that we will see real progress in terms of uh, uh, what what a healthier Ireland can look like and what the healthy Ireland framework, our national health framework policy actually means. And the other message I tried to get across, and there were some phenomenal speakers there, uh, and you know, great credit to Toda and her team for pulling together a, a brilliant event, uh, was that we... We tend to focus on, on health in Ireland in a negative way. You know, we don't really have um, a health service. We have an illness response service. So, so when people get ill, they turn to their doctor or their GP or their hospital. What we're trying to do through the GAA and what we'd love to see communities doing as well is actually take the proactive step of focusing on what is it that we can do to remain healthy and what are the building blocks of health rather than what are the responses needed to ill health. Now, that's a very interesting point you're making about the illness response service instead of a real health service executive that we have in place. But what would be involved in making that a reality? Yeah, well, first of all, it's education. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of the the health space is so cluttered at at the moment by... um, 
agendas that are trying to sell particular um, uh, services, products, etc., that it can leave the individual or the consumer confused as to, as to what is actually healthy. Um, and then uh, there is a fear factor. People, There is an element of fear factor that people feel that they don't have the requisite skills to support others in becoming healthier. But what we have learned through the, the, the likes of the Healthy Club and our health and wellbeing structures is that a little bit of information and support can go a very, very long way. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we recommend that clubs appoint health and wellbeing officers. We don't require them to do that, yet the vast majority of clubs who are, can find it difficult in this day and age sometimes to fill chairman roles or secretary roles or PRO roles, a, a, a large percentage of our clubs are, are finding people putting their hands up willing to take on. And then right down to individual level as well, we all have a role to play in making First of all, ourselves healthier, and and you know there's a reason why they tell you to put your own um, oxygen mask on in a plane first, and then supporting those around us to enjoy healthier lifestyles as well. Because Ireland, you know, we're all living longer now, and it's not just about the the years in our life; it's about the life in our years. And Colin, in your opinion, how important are events like Rejuvenate in terms of bringing well-being into the mainstream? Yeah, like anything that brings people together, I'm in favour of. You know, I'm a social beast myself, and uh, sometimes we can t- we can work away in our own little silos and, and think that we're, we're you know that we're, we're plowing away on this furrow on our own. And then you come along to an event like that, and you meet so many different like-minded people who are doing things maybe in a slightly different, uh, interesting way that you can learn from, or that maybe they could pick up something from yourself. And it just gives uh, re-energizes people. And you know, the, the theme was to rejuvenate and. And, and I think re- I definitely left the event feeling very uh, enthusiastic and, and energised about the kind of people that are trying to um, raise the, the agenda of health in this country, but not just in terms of raising awareness, but putting in place practical supports and classes and resources and networks to support people on that journey as well. Now, taking a broader look at the GAA as an organisation, when you were playing football with Leitrim, did you feel that there was a disconnect between Crow Park and the grassroots level? And how has this viewpoint changed since you began working within the organisation? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very good question because when when you're a player you operate in a little bubble um, and uh, you know I think anyone who's uh, participating or um, at, at a, a high level of sport and, and intercounty football and hurling is while it's amateur in in nature it's prof- it's professional um, in 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 all other aspects um, and in order to be able to to make some of the decisions and, and um, sacrifices necessary to compete at that level you do. Have have to operate in a little bit of a bubble and you don't tend to take the, the bigger picture and yes to be frank yes I would have thought there was a disconnect between um, the grassroots playing population and uh, the the powers that be in Crow Park as it's seen and uh, since joining the team up here in, in 2011 one of the first things I noticed was that you know as soon as every, the, the, the time that the, the Crow Park team dedicate to their jobs is, is incredible because we're all very very mindful that uh, the, the engine room of the association is powered by volunteers. But as soon as our, our, our day or, or a, a, an evening even uh, might, meeting might finish, the vast majority of the team here off their, their club caps and head home to jobs as club secretary or board and old chairman or coach uh, and, and many still playing with the club as well. I only finished up with my own the year before last and was travelling up and down the, the six hour round trip uh, to Leitrim to do so and, and, and glad to do so. So it, it, it's given me really uh, Carl over the last uh, five, six years in here a huge appreciation for the officer, volunteer officer network uh, that makes up the um, the GAA, and you know I'm lucky enough to be secretary to the Health and Wellbeing Committee. Uh, everybody on that committee are volunteers. They give up their their time to to try to bring their professional acumen and knowledge to the fore for the betterment, not just of the association, but for the health of Ireland as a whole. Um, and you know we have a, a, an array of people, the likes of, of Janice, Dr. Janice Harrington, who's a uh, uh, lectures down in UCC in in New 
pediatrician and public epidemiology. We have Susan Kenny and, and, and Janice's, uh, you know, member of the St. Finn Bowers Club uh, uh, down in Cork. We have Susan Kenny, who's a member of the Nave Marnold Club here in Dublin, who is program director for the National Office for Suicide Prevention. We have Justin Campbell out the west, who's a, an addiction counsellor, former Galway hurler, uh, an All Ireland Club winner, um, and you know, we have the likes of um, Cahill Hand and, and Fiona Teague from Monaghan and Tyrone, respectively. Who, you know, so the, the people. The, the members they travel from the four corners of the country to giving up their valuable free time to do this for the betterment of the association and Colin for years the GAA was dubbed as the grab all association has the organisation yet managed to rid itself of some of the money hungry perceptions which some members of the public have held about the organisation yeah, yeah, I've heard that and, and continue to hear that um, level that the association and, and, I, and I think to a degree it's our own fault um, the reason that, that I think that that is level at the association is because of the amount of fundraising that people see visibly taking place in their communities and counties for their local GA clubs um, or, or, or county teams and the reason that there's so much fundraising is required is because our, our membership rate is absolutely minuscule compared to any other um, leisure activity in the country pretty much like you, you couldn't compare golf uh, annual subscriptions fees with what it costs to be a, a member of your local GA club in order to provide buses um, for all the underage teams that clubs do uh, to provide uh, refreshments after training and matches. It takes significant money to do that. And then the association at a national level, obviously we have um, through through gate receipts and, and commercial partnerships and sponsorships, we have significant revenue. Uh, but 85% of that, 85% of all GA income is reinvested into our clubs, into our counties and into our, our um, physical facilities right around the country. And uh, you have, uh, a big, big weekend down in Cork, <laughs> of course, this weekend with mm. the reopening of, of Parky Equive down there. And, you know, there isn't a club in the country, a GA club in the country now that just hasn't got remarkable facilities available to that community to use. It's not that club's um, facility, that is the community's facility. And through the Healthy Club project, one of the things that we've been working on with the participating clubs is the is the notion and the importance of partnership and making sure that that their facilities are open to and available to other entities within communities that, let's say, um, if an ICA group was struggling to have a meeting room, that that, that could be facilitated by the local club. And like you, you mentioned mindfulness at the, at the top of the show, and one of our flagship healthy clubs is St. Colum Kills in Meath, and they've been involved since phase one back in 2013. And you know they run mindfulness classes uh, every week now in their clubhouse for any member of the public that wants to come along and, and avail of that. And they've also started up a men's shed within their, you know, for some of the older men within their community who might have been retired or out of work. And it's giving them real purpose and a social outlet. And that that is, you know, I think that really. Uh, puts puts pay to the notion of the of the grab all association um, and just on 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 Tuesday just gone here we had 145 member older members of the GA from Meath um, attend the GA museum um, and some of them the, the eldest of the group was 95 um, and uh, the vast majority were in of, of them were older men in their 70s 80s and a couple in their 90s that Meath GA uh, thanks to a small grant through our, our relationship with with um, Irish Life and the Healthy Club project were were able to put on free of charge a trip to the Co Park uh, Museum a tour of the stage and a meal up uh, looking over the, the wonderful pitch here and Park Duffy, the Irish sure her addressed that group and he actually, funny, he, he mentioned the, the notion of the Grab All Association and he says, you know, there was 145 people, older members there on the day that didn't have to put their, their hand into their pocket because um, Mead GA and their clubs um, augmented the, the balance that was um, provided by the grants from Irish Life and they had, I just got an email back in um, this morning from uh, some of the groups saying that it was one of the best days that they've had and they all headed back to Rathos Club in Mead afterwards for a Cayley uh, and some music and some Shauna Key stories and uh, I, I guarantee you that they will live long in their memory. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.